Okay, I've got a photo shoot coming up um, next week, six days' time, and my roller called shutter is not operating properly, so I'm going to have to um, do some work on it. And I decided last night to take the plunge and actually take it apart. And after reading some things on the internet, of course. Um, was going to treat it the way that most people seem to fix their cameras. So uh, me and Boo here, who's my lovely furry assistant, decided to, uh, we took it apart and, and got stuck in. So uh, there it is, in bits. I'm a little bit concerned, but uh, yeah, uh, watch and see what happens. Okay, so this is... Uh this is me opening up the film bay. So you slide that bit across, lift that up, and then you pull that towards you to release the catch. Then you can get into where you load the film. This little catch here on my model um, allows you to actually take off the entire back. So you can put on different types of backs for, uh, for these rolly cords. Okay, here's me stashing it away. So now we should be able to see the shutter in action, um, the shutter issue, a little bit clearer. So there we go. There's me trying to take a shot, and you can see there's a delay there. It's uh, it's quite common for these shutters to be uh, to jam. See, I've got it on bulb there. The actual aperture doesn't seem to stick at all, but the shutter is a uh, is a pain. So I release and see there's a delay. It's basically jamming, but not in a Bob Marley kind of way. Okay, so in this next bit, uh, here I am, carefully lifting off the the leatherette cosmetics on the front there. There's a few screws underneath, see? So, uh, if you're gentle and just ease it off, you should be able to put it back again. Now, the reason you'd want to do this is if you were going to sell it again later, then collectors like to uh, see the original look. Although I have seen some people really pimping up their cameras by taking this and replacing it with a completely different colour leatherette. Now, that's pretty cool to look at, but um, if you're treating your equipment as an investment that you will sell on later then it's probably not a good idea okay now so here it is the one side looking a little bit like some sort of a horrific autopsy of photographic equipment now I'm going to start uh, butchering I mean removing the uh, front of the other side you do have to be ever so careful and it makes an awful kind of cracky noise as you pull it up but that's just the uh, the old glue uh, separating. It's very exciting. I might fast forward this bit. Okay I got all excited and I started unscrewing one of the screws before filming so catching up here. It's me just finishing off the first screw at the top. Now some tweezers would have been handy here. I could have really uh, <laughs> dropped so many screws so many times. But um, one little tip, there's a little magnet there I've got in the back, um, although it's not very uh, very magnetic, um, the screw's not really attracted to it quite so well. Um, and there you can see, that's the first one, it's holding the uh, brackets on the top there. So ever so carefully going round to each of the others. Now it's interesting, there's two different types of screws here, so so long as you remember that the little ones go on the outside and the larger ones go on the inside on this particular bracket then uh, you're not going to be too uh, misled or wondering where the screws are going to go there we go I've got another little magnet thing I'll put the other size screw on it I'm so clever okay so you can see there's two more screws there As I say, I discovered there are only two different screw types in the top. 
All right, so from the bottom there, you can see there's another screw. I'll point out all the screws there. I'll whip those two out. And there's another one there. Now, some of them are obscured by the glue. You can't quite make them out because uh, it, it's, you know, they've been covered for such a long time. As I'm working along, I'm I'm getting better and better tools. <laughs> they aren't quite tweezers, but um, they're easier to, to picking screws up than uh, than my big chubby fingers. Okay, now this is on the other side, as you can see. Um, I fast forwarded it a little bit, so I've loosened off a couple of those screws. This is another one of the smaller skinny screws. Okay, and uh, and again, I'm learning. Back in with the uh, pin those pliers. I know it went okay last night, but I still worry seeing that nearly fall out of the uh, out of the grips. Okay, so that's another skinny one. I'll put that on the same magnet as the last one. Okay, and there's a gaggle of these at the top here as well. It's the same kind of deal. This screw and the other one with the uh, the slight indent, they are the mounting screws that mount the entire frame onto the um, focusing arms. Forgot what they were called there for a second. Okay, so ever so gently working the screwdriver into the notch, and then pushing really hard so I get good purchase. Now. As you can see which ones I'm taking off, that looks like a skinny one. And I think that one is a skinny one as well. So what we've got is we've got, yeah, that's another skinny one. So we've got four screws that are the chubby ones that hold the frame to the focusing arms. And a heap of little screws that hold the frame parts together so there we go okay I'll come back to that in a second now this little leatherette thing you can carefully twist around and slide over that lever so you, you, some people say you can cut it to take it off but um, I was prepared to do that but obviously I didn't have to because I spun it around and it whipped off now checking what screws I have left if I've missed any now you can see there's another screw here that I just find that's another one of the indented screws that's hold the bracket onto the um, focusing arms that's another thick one you can see as before I said there was four screws but there were only three on the magnet now there's four on the magnet because I missed that one there you go very strong magnets don't get them near your old tapes now at this point I think I've got all the screws but I actually missed one there's one over the other side We'll see that when I move this. You've just got to be really careful with these things if you're going to do it and uh, see what's getting in the way. See, that's getting in the way. That's the uh, flash shutter sink doodah. Okay, now someone mentioned in another video that I saw that moving the uh, focusing arm as far out as possible was better to get at these things. Now you can see there's a little brace there that's still holding this front together, I'm, that's it right there, I'm poking it now. So there's a single screw that holds that on there. I shouldn't really have bent it across so much because uh, it only gives a little before it, uh, you know, potentially could snap off. So just whipping that off. There's a little washer underneath that as well. And there we go, That that is free, that's the lens is free. So this is another completely different type of screw, so as long as you remember where it was, um, you can't really mix it up for, and screw it into the, back into the wrong hole. So here we go, just gently bend that arm back into place. It's quite malleable 
and you'll see these are the two arms here the focusing arms and uh, they had these two I don't know the technical word for it but uh, they're like little gaskets and I believe the thinner one goes on the bottom there's two thicknesses and the thinner one goes on the bottom and uh, the fatter one goes on the top now the screws of course sandwich these in don't know how I'm going to get this back on there's also these tiny tiny little washers that go around them as well only seemingly on the bottom part of this action there's uh, one of them and there's one on the other side as well I'm not entirely certain that between which piece of metal they actually go they probably go right on the top so that the screw turns and doesn't grate against it so here if I lift this up you can see there's a thin one and a slightly thicker one, it's probably double the thickness I'm sure they're uh, they're quite essential these things are precision instruments so next I'm going to give it a little complimentary blow so ok I've got this uh, whole bracket off the top here with the uh, lenses and I can't get it past this um, the flash sink socket so if we look underneath here there are two screws mounting that if I can loosen those two screws then I can turn this around and ease the frame off so uh, here I am getting stuck in now it was a little bit of a struggle actually turning this thing around um, purely because it's so small and fiddly um, but the frame will come off with a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery maybe with someone a bit more um, better dexterity than I will uh, find it a lot easier Okay, so I actually have to turn this over now and uh, not to screw there they go, there, there they are. I'll just uh, throw them carelessly at the back there. Actually, they've gone onto the magnet too with the skinny screws. Now, at this point, I think this is great. I can just turn this round and ease the bracket off. But um, I, it takes me quite a while. It's quite embarrassing. I might have to uh, skip this bit. And show you when it <laughs> show you the next bit. Ta-da! Here we go. That's off. So uh, just going to uh, I, I don't know why I did this. I just tested the action and it's made bugger all difference to it. Uh, firing any better? So uh, okay. There's uh, there's ha what the back looks like, and I'm just going to turn it over a little bit so you can be familiar if ever you're going to take yours apart with uh, how this particular model looks. Okay, so at this point I find that there's another screw that I've actually missed. As I said before, it, it, they get quite covered in uh, in the glue. And uh, I've only just taken off the leatherette completely off of this side. So uh, there we go, there's another screw. And I think that's another skinny little one. So at this point I'll struggle to try and work out how to get this apart so I can get at the... Uh, I'm getting a little bit frustrated there. It was late at night when I did this. So, any second now, I managed to work out that the back comes off and I can get to see the action. There we go. Now, the actual shutter arm knob has, uh, it is obstructing 
the removal of, of this frame. So any second I'll turn the camera around to it. Just trying to work out what was stopping it opening up. You can't rush into these things, you know. There we go, there we go, see? It's just catching on the knob there. So that's not going to come out. That needs to twist off. In a closer examination, you see there's a nut underneath with a washer. And the knobbly bit is actually the bolt. <laughs> Okay, so now taking the brave decision to apply some hardware to this nut. And ever so gently I'm nudging this round. I don't want to I don't want to damage the nut, the bolt rather. There we go, loosened it off and you see it falls out the bottom here. There you go. Gonna have to get the tweezers out to put that back together, I can tell you. No washer, just those two parts. And there we go. That's off. Now you can see these two bits on the side there. That they're, they're the underside of the uh, of the knobs. They adjust your uh, whether you're on a self timer or yeah, manual. Pretty straightforward. The lens actually unscrews anti-clockwise. You take the lens off and then be very, very careful putting it somewhere very gently. There we go, onto a nice soft cloth. And keep it safe. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here now is the locking ring. And this black locking ring has got a single screw on it. Yeah, the action is still rubbish. I don't know why I even bothered testing it at this point. So, you see the black locking ring with a single screw holding that ring in place. We'll come to that in just a second. Before we go any further, another complimentary blow. Okay, here we are with the locking ring again. Now to get a very, very small pair of, they're like kind of, you know, eyeglasses repair screwdriver. And very carefully take this little one out. Awfully fiddly and I really wished I had some, uh, I actually dropped it at this point into uh, part of the shutter mechanism. So. actually got some tweezers as you can see I'm slowly upgrading my tools as I make trips out to the garage to get different bits and bobs for this little uh, exercise tiny little screw okay so I'm gonna put that somewhere safe on another magnet and that one is magnetic so that's good that stays there I'll be careful not to touch these magnets together because they bite your fingers off Okay, at this point I've got to try and work out, there we go, that's sliding round. Now I don't know if it needs to be a specific so many turns round, so at this point I'm going to have to mark something up. Okay, here I am with a permanent marker, struggling to draw on this uh, shiny surface. I do make some sort of... Uh, mark so 
just takes a little bit of time. I expect it's covered in a thin layer of uh, graphite. So there we go. I know which notch that I need to uh, settle on once it the tension starts uh, starts mounting when I do it up. So there we go. And you'll notice that this is only like one and a bit turns before this whole thing um, comes loose. So there's one turn, and then that's it. It's just popped off. So at this point here. There's another two rings, one for the aperture and one for the uh, the shutter, I presume. And uh, <laughs> they need to be in the right place when I put them back together. So I'm not going to move the shutter. I'm not going to move the aperture. So they'll fit back on. Okay. So I'm also going to have to mark these up too. You can see they've got notches and they're in the right place. You can't actually put these back together incorrectly anyway because they all have interlocking the interlocking rings now there we go you can actually see most of the action or part of the action of the shutter there now so uh, I just need to make sure that I mark this other piece up here so I know exactly where it uh, where it lines up now that's the other side you can see there's a little bit of graphite on those notches there now each one of those notches is an aperture setting So here we go, I'm going to mark up this ring here so I know where that lines up as well. Ta -da! There you go, see I marked it loads on that side and a little bit on that side just for good measure. Okay, now here I am showing the, um, the graphite on the underside of the the ring with the aperture notches so this must be the aperture ring now I probably could have left this thinking about it because it's actually probably quite good for it to have a little bit of uh, graphite in there but um, I was on a cleaning mission so I just saw a bit of muck and thought I'll clean it oops so now as all these websites have told me that lighter fluid evaporates leaving no residue at all. I probably should have tested this before I even took anything apart in the first place, but I've just dropped a couple of uh, drops of this lighter fluid that I've bought onto this plastic lid and uh, we'll watch it evaporate, see what happens when it's dried out. So, true to their words, there's not a damn thing left on there. After it's all evaporated, there's absolutely nothing. That is clear. Okay, at this point I decide to take the plunge and I'm going to apply some to my shutter blade. Um, now this is a bit stupid because cotton buds are made up of uh, lots of tiny little bits of cotton and any one of those bits could have fallen onto my shutter mechanism will be transported on in the fluid and that would have made it worse so I, I don't recommend doing this with cotton buds but um, I just needed to get some on there and I'm lazy so trying to work it in before it all evaporates but the shutter is not firing oh there we go see it's not quite coming back now I've heard people say that when you have fluid on it it does ease up the action and it works not in this case, but perseverance will see you through many things. I'm getting a bit annoyed now. Okay, so at this point. Close your eyes if you're a bit nervous because the cotton bud's coming back. Ever so gently trying to tease the leaves a little bit. There's absolutely nothing visible coming off them. It's 
So after a bit of working, uh, and the morning after it was still jamming, I put a little bit more on and worked it a bit more, and it's behaving itself consistently now. So I'm quite happy. Here we go. I'm just changing the uh, actual shutter speed there, trying out a couple of different uh, settings. And it seems to be quite good. So some people say that if it's really bad, you can take the entire shutter mechanism out and soak it overnight. Um, this will dissolve the gunk and whatever else may possibly be jamming it up. But um, thank goodness I didn't have to go that far. I just uh, went as minimal as possible to fix it. If it wasn't going to respond to this kind of treatment, then I was uh, going to take the whole thing out and soak it overnight. Here we go, you can see it's jamming again a little bit here. So I'll give it another dab with the... Uh... Oh, don't look, there's more, uh... more cotton buds. Putting the lighter fluid on the one side of the shutter leaves wasn't quite doing it for me, it was still jamming a little bit, so I cut down this plectrum type tool that I've got with my iPhone repair kit that I've used many times to fix my iPhones. I cut down the edges so it would fit in to the uh, the lens housing and it meets the two notches either side so that helped me unscrew the back lens. It was a perfect fit actually so uh, if you're a guitarist or if you fix a uh, iPhones or iPads, you probably have one of these lying around that you might be able to trim down. So I just unscrewed this back lens element and popped it out, kept it safe as I did with the front one. After this, I did apply some more lighter fluid to the other side, and after repeated shutter actions, it did free up and dry out, and it's now working. The next video is, uh, I'm separating these two videos, one has taken it apart, which is this one, scared the hell out of me, but not half as much as putting it back together again, which was a, a right trial, I can tell you. So the next video is me putting it back together. Thanks very much for watching, find more videos at looksee.me.com.